Hello lovelies, in this video the brilliant Dr Abba is going to take you through the next stage of the process. Here we're looking at transcription and mRNA and this is the detail that you need for your A-level biology. Transcription and mRNA. First of all, let's start by looking at why do we need mRNA. DNA is a really large molecule. It's up to about two meters in length in a human nucleus. So if you took the DNA out of the nucleus of every cell, each bit of DNA would be about two meters long if you stretched out and uncoiled and untwisted it. It can't fit through the nuclear pores in the envelope around the nucleus. It's just too long. And if it's condensed, it's too large. So what we do is we use RNA to make a copy the sections of DNA that we want to use in order to read them to produce proteins and this is small enough and short enough that it can leave the nucleus through those pores. So here's my mRNA and what it's doing is it's leaving the nucleus through the pore it's mRNA remember M4 messenger so it's kind of carrying that message of the DNA code that it's copied and taking it to the ribosome where it will produce a protein from that code. Let's remind ourselves of the structure of mRNA. So it's single stranded, it is short ish, so that will depend on the length of sequence we need for the protein that we're trying to make. But they, it's obviously a lot shorter than the entire DNA molecule. It contains uracil and not thymine bases as part of its nucleotides. And those nucleotides contain the ribose sugar and not the deoxyribose sugar. mRNA is formed in the nucleus through the process of transcription, which we're going to look at today. And it's complementary to the sequence of DNA that it codes for in terms of what the protein code is. It will be complementary to that section of DNA. It is obviously formed in the nucleus, but is able to leave the nucleus, as we've just said, and it will go and associate with a ribosome. When we say associate, what we mean is that it will bind to a ribosome in the cytoplasm or on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So mRNA is formed through transcription, which takes place in the nucleus, and it goes to the cytoplasm to be translated into a polypeptide chain. Transcription. So we're going to go through the actual step-by-step -step process of transcription now, and all of the language we're going to use here is really important in order to make sure that if we're going to write something out like this as a long answer question in the exam, we make sure our language is on point so we hit the mark scheme. So transcription is the process of making pre-mRNA from DNA. We'll explain what the difference between pre-mRNA and normal mRNA is later, but for now that's kind of our definition and it is occurring in the nucleus. So step one involves the enzyme DNA helicase. We've seen this enzyme before, and we should know that it breaks the hydrogen bonds between the bases on the strand of DNA to separate them. Remember that hydrogen bonding between the bases is not a form of condensation reaction or hydrolysis reaction to make it. It's not a covalent bond. So we're just saying we break the hydrogen bonds. That's it. And it only does this on the section of DNA that contains the code for the protein that we want to be synthesized. So we're not unwinding the entire DNA strand like we do with DNA replication. We're just opening up a small section that contains the section, contains the sequence of nucleotides that we need, which codes for the protein that we would like. And the point of this is to expose our nucleotides. Step two involves RNA polymerase. So this is another enzyme. It's very important that when we're writing these steps out, we are very clear that we distinguish between DNA enzymes and RNA enzymes. They're gonna have different active sites that will not work on the other molecule. So in, although DNA helicase is the same as DNA replication because it does the same job because it's acting on the DNA, now we're building a strand of RNA, we need RNA polymerase. So it moves along one of the two DNA strands that's been exposed and that's therefore acting as the template. We just need one strand. And RNA polymerase does what we would expect it to do. 
it joins together the free RNA nucleotides that have already aligned through complementary base pairing, and it joins their phosphodiester bonds or creates their phosphodiester bonds to join up that sugar phosphate backbone. And ultimately, it creates the strand of pre mRNA. So, the final piece of this series of steps is to turn pre mRNA into actual mRNA. And we do that through a process called splicing. The reason it needs to be done is that pre mRNA contains introns. Introns are sections of DNA sequence that do not code for proteins. And some people refer to this as kind of junk DNA. Normally, we just refer to it as non-coding DNA. So those bits of DNA code don't actually code for proteins. We kind of just skip them or miss them out. Whereas there are exons, which are sections of the DNA code that do code for proteins. And we obviously need to keep these in because then when we take it to our ribosome, it's going to read those exons and those bits of DNA se base sequence are going to be what codes for our protein. So splicing removes the introns. So they are literally cut out and then the exons are stitched back together or joined back together in the right order so that we just then have a piece of mRNA that is just made up of exons. This only happens in eukaryotes. So prokaryotes do not need to carry out this process of splicing because they don't actually have introns and exons in their DNA. All of their DNA codes for proteins. They don't have any non-coding sections, so it's not needed. So this normally happens after the pre-mRNA has left the nucleus. So it happens in the cytoplasm of cells. And then once it's been done, that piece of mRNA will then go off to the ribosome. I like to remember which way round this is by saying that introns interrupt the exons. So they are the ones that need to be removed. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches. <laughs>